today we're going to be doing a Brummel splice on Endura 12 rope. Endura 12 rope is a high strength, low stretch fiber rope. It's 12 strand construction, relatively easy to splice. We're going to be doing a Brummel splice on it because it's a secure splice that does not require additional whipping twine or anything. It's a self-locking splice. There are two different methods to doing a Brummel splice. One method allows you to put an eye in using only one end of the rope. That makes a nice soft eye on one end. The other method is when you have access to both ends of the rope. And that method allows you to put a captive thimble onto your rope. For this splice, we're going to be doing the single end method. We have a separate video for the double end captive thimbles version of the Brummel splice. You'll want to have a few tools. A knife is an important thing to have. Something to mark the rope is very helpful. A um, tool for pushing the rope through itself, uh, which is called FIDs. You can make your own FID out of wire if you want. It's just, just a pushing tool. And a method of measuring rope. And the most important thing I find is the needle nose pliers for this splice. So we're going to get started and you want to determine what diameter rope you have. So the one of the simpler ways to do it is to take a piece of uh, thread or twine and just wrap it around your rope and you'll find your circumference. Measure that length. You have your circumference and then to get diameter you just take the circumference divided by three and that will give you a, a very close proximity to the diameter. When people are talking about splicing, they'll talk about fid length as opposed to the fid tool. Fid length is a dimension used by splicers so they can have one set of splicing instructions regardless of the diameter of the rope. So the instruction will say measure a fid length. So a fid length, one fid length, equals 21 times the diameter of the rope. A second term they'll use in the instructions, they'll say measure a short fid length. A short fid length is one third of a fid or seven diameters of the rope. In arborist uh, chipper winch lines, like I say, some, two of the most popular diameters are five sixteenths and three eighths. So I've laid out here three eighths times 21 diameters gives us seven and three quarter inches for our one fid length. If we were to do, add three more rope diameters, it would go up to eight and seven eighths. A short fid length is two and five eighths. So if the, when the instructions say measure a short fid length plus a long fid length, that comes out to 10 and three eighths inches. We will be using some three eighths rope. I've already pre-measured the rope, so I know I have three eighths. You'll notice I've cut the rope, taped the end of the rope and cut it at an angle to give it a point. That helps when we're pushing the rope through. So let's get started with our splice. So with this splice, the first measurement that we're gonna make is measuring one fid length. As I said, it's a 3 8 inch rope. One fid length is seven and three quarter inches. So I will just lay out my ruler here. And I'm gonna make our seven and three quarter inch measurement. The second measurement is three rope diameters down. So this was mark A, the first one. Three rope diameters down here. I'm going to make this in red. This is our reference mark. And the reference mark will allow us to now make our eye size. So we're going to measure our eye size from the reference mark. Okay. So I'm going to make an eye from the reference mark. I'm thinking a couple inches, just a small eye. So I'll make this one right here. Okay. So now you can see we have tail end, mark A, the reference mark, and then mark B. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is now basically put the knot, the, the rope through itself and turn it inside out. So by doing that, what we do is we open up the rope. We grab one of our fids. 
We're gonna go right at mark A. And we're passing it through without snagging any of the, the fiber or the strands. This is a 12 strand rope. So what we want is to have six of the strands on one side and six of the strands on other. You can, as you look at it, you should see three strands going to the left and three strands going to the right. So I'm just gonna take a quick look. Looks like we're good. We've got the proper number of strands on each side. So I will just slide that tail end through the rope. Now, what we have here, you can see it's, it's slid through. We're gonna to wanna to roll, pull this through so that it rolls inside out on itself. So I'm gonna be pulling with my left hand with my right hand, I'm gonna use these fingers and just sort of massage that around so that it rolls. And you can see I'm just pulling like this with my fingers and it has rolled inside out on itself. You can see if we, that when it rolled inside out, there's a little hole in the center right here. And I'm just gonna open that up just a wee bit. But that's a nice little opening that you'll see when we use. So the second thing we're gonna do now is we'll do this exact same thing with Mark B. So we've got Mark A, our reference point, and Mark B. So I'm just gonna grab one of our fins, accordion the rope open a little bit. Pass this through. Let's see here. I think looks like I've got one too many strands here. That looks good. Okay, so three on each side. Once again, I'm just gonna push the end right through. And I'll pull, pull A right through that opening. So you can see we've got A turned in, and now I'm gonna roll mark B the same way where I pull. And just with my fingers, move it around. And then for that opening in the center there, between, just open them up a little bit. Okay, so we've got marks A and B. Now we want to unroll these, uh, these two marks. I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So what we do here, we're gonna start with mark A. We're gonna to try to push the standing part of the rope up through itself to unroll it. Now this is where the needle nose pliers come in handy. So I've got that little opening and I'm just gonna stick the needle nose pliers right in it. See if you can get a good view of this right in there. And then I can roll it with the needle nose pliers. And I'm using my fingers to help it as the needle nose pliers rolled it through. Now we can grab that and pull it right out and mark, pull mark B through itself, through, through A, I'm sorry. You'll notice now, mark A has come around and has, is back right again, right side out. So we've rolled it twice and basically unwrapped it so it's proper again. Now we're gonna do the same thing with mark B over here. With mark B, instead of do, pushing the standard part, we're gonna use the portion of the rope from the tail and pull it through. So basically this part has to pull out to make our, our eye. Once again, I wanna find that opening that we had. Okay, I'm gonna put my needle nose pliers in and just roll it to get come through. You can see as it comes through, mark A starts coming up and locking in to mark B. And you'll see our little red reference mark lined up right where we started before. Okay, great. So now what we're gonna wanna do here is bury this tail. Now, you'll remember our tail length was a fid length long. 
There we go. Our tail was a fid length long. And we're going to go in one rope diameter down. So we can see here, one rope diameter. That's where we're going to go in. So we have that gap of one rope diameter. And it's going to go down. And we're going to want it to come out a fid length plus a short right from the bead. So the fid length plus a short fid was 10 and 3 quarter inches. So let me just lay this out. 10 and 3 quarter inches right down here. Okay. So you can see we're going to go in at this mark. And then this mark here. It's going to come out there. I'm going to take the end, pull it, open it up. By, by pulling this tail here, it'll get it out of the way, give us a little room to open it up. Slide the Selma fit in. Selma fit uh, is nice because it has a little hook. Put that in there and grab the hook and keep moving that in. As I go in, I'm going to just try to accordion the rope a little bit and then slide it up. Look that in just a wee bit. I'm coming out right where I made our exit mark. I'm not pulling it, I'm just milking it out. There we go, and it came right out. So I can give this a nice pull, bag everything up, take my fit off. Now, one, one fit length was seven and three quarter inches. I want to have a half a fit length so we can do a taper. So a half a fit length is just a wee bit less than four inches, of course. So it's like four and seven eighths, or three and seven eighths. So we'll just make a mark. Now, what we're going to do for our taper is we're going to cut pairs of strands from here. So what I will do is I will mark a left and right pair. Then I'm going to skip a strand and do another left and right pair. And then I'll skip a strand and I'll do a third left and right pair. Make sure you can see that in the camera. Okay. I'll take this tape off so that I can now pull those strands out and cut them free. Get that first pair. I'll pull them off out. And right where the marks were, I will take my knife and cut them at the marks. Now I can do the second pair. Also cutting right where the marks were. Now my third pair. Same story at the marks. Okay, so we've got a taper going to this point and you've got about inch and a half to two inches of rope that's not so much tapered. I mean, the, I had cut the rope at an angle before we started with the tape. So there's a little bit of a taper, but not enough. So what I want to do is fan out the ends and lay them out. We're going to cut this at an angle. Basically, we're going to have one long one and then all the rest, because of cutting at an angle, will give us a nice taper. Okay. So you can see the taper is nice and smooth there. So I just bag this up a little bit and then pinch the rope where, it cross, where the crossing was so that hold it. And I'm just going to milk this down, all the bagged area, just milk it down. And you'll notice the tail just disappears into the rope. Milk it a couple times. And you can see now we have 
a nice smooth taper. Hopefully you can see that on the video. A nice smooth taper, which means we'll have a nice strong splice to this rope. We've finished our Brummel splice using one end of the rope.